What are bloodborne pathogens? They're microorganisms in the blood or body fluids that can cause diseases in people. The two most common bloodborne viruses are hepatitis and HIV, the virus that causes AIDS. Why are you receiving this training? It's possible for employees in non-healthcare related industries to encounter items or situations involving contamination with blood or other potentially infectious body fluids. Who's at risk? Everyone who comes into contact with human blood or bodily fluid or materials contaminated by them is at risk of exposure to bloodborne pathogens. The type of bloodborne pathogens most likely to affect the general public are hepatitis and HIV or AIDS. There are three major types of hepatitis and all of them affect your liver. Some of the symptoms are similar, but they have different treatments. Hepatitis A. This type won't lead to long-term infection and usually doesn't cause any complications. The liver usually heals in about two months. It can be prevented with a vaccine. You get hepatitis A from eating or drinking something that's got the virus in it. If you have hepatitis A, your doctor will carefully see how your liver is working, but there aren't any treatments to cure it. Hepatitis B. Most people recover from this type in six months. Sometimes, however, it causes a long-term infection that could lead to liver damage. Once you've got the disease, you can spread the virus even if you don't feel sick. You won't catch it if you get a vaccine. There are several drugs that treat long-term hepatitis B. You can get hepatitis B if you have sex with someone who's been infected, share dirty needles when using illegal drugs, have direct contact with infected blood or the body fluids of someone who's got the disease. If you're pregnant and you have hepatitis B, you could give the disease to your unborn child. If you deliver a baby who's got it, the baby needs to get treatment in the first 12 hours after birth. Hepatitis C. Many people with this type don't have any symptoms. About 80% of those with this disease get long-term infection. It can sometimes lead to cirrhosis, a scarring of the liver. There's no vaccine to prevent it. Just like hepatitis B, you can get this type by sharing needles and having contact with infected blood. You can also catch it by having sex with someone who's infected, but that's less common. For hepatitis C, some people improve if they get a special combination of drugs, but there are side effects to this treatment, including severe anemia and birth defects. Your doctor may also suggest other drugs for hepatitis C, which cure more people and may be better tolerated. The blood used in transfusion is safe. It gets checked beforehand to make sure it's free of the virus that causes hepatitis B or C. There are additional strains of hepatitis not covered here. Symptoms of hepatitis. What are the symptoms of hepatitis? The most common symptoms for all three types are dark urine, stomach pain, yellowing of the skin or eyes, pale or clay colored stool, low grade fever, loss of appetite, fatigue, feeling sick to the stomach, and a lack of nutrition. If you have hepatitis B, you may also have achy joints. See your doctor as soon as possible if you have any of these symptoms. HIV. HIV stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus. If left untreated, HIV can lead to the disease AIDS, or Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. Unlike some other viruses, the human body can't get rid of HIV completely, so once you have HIV, you have it for life. HIV attacks the body's immune system. If left untreated, HIV makes a person more likely to get infections or infection-related cancers. These infections or cancers take advantage of a very weak immune system. No effective cure for HIV currently exists, but with proper treatment and medical care, HIV can be controlled. The medicine used to treat HIV is called antiretroviral therapy, or ART. If taken the right way every day, this medicine can dramatically prolong the lives of many people with HIV, keep them healthy, and greatly lower their chance of transmitting the virus to others. Today, a person who has been diagnosed with HIV, treated before the disease is far advanced, and stays on treatment can live nearly as long as someone who doesn't have HIV. The only way to know for sure you have HIV is to get tested. Testing is relatively simple. You can ask your health care provider for an HIV test. Many medical clinics, substance abuse programs, community health centers, and hospitals offer them also. AIDS. 
AIDS stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. AIDS is the final stage of HIV infection, and not everyone who has HIV advances to this stage. AIDS is the stage of infection that occurs when your immune system is badly damaged and you've become vulnerable to opportunistic infections. Without treatment, people who are diagnosed with AIDS typically survive about three years. Once someone has a dangerous opportunistic illness, life expectancy without treatment falls to about a year. People with AIDS need medical treatment to prevent death. Prevention of bloodborne pathogens. Take universal precautions. According to the concept of universal precautions, treat all body fluids as potentially infected. Don't share needles, razors, or anything that could contain blood. Practice safe sex. Always wear appropriate PPE and always wash your hands after a potential exposure. Disposal of contaminated materials will only be handled by qualified employees. Any contaminated material must be double bagged in bright red colored bags. A biohazard kit has all the necessary equipment to properly clean and disinfect biohazard sites. Exposure control. Universal precautions will be used to prevent contact with blood or other potentially infectious materials, including all body fluids. According to the concept of universal precautions, all body fluids must be considered potentially infectious materials. Potentially exposed employees shall wash their hands and any other exposed skin with soap and water or flush mucous membranes such as eyes with water immediately or as soon as feasible following contact of such areas with blood or other potentially infectious materials. Exposure Reports an exposure event is a specific eye, mouth, other mucous membrane, non-intact skin, or parenteral contact with blood or other potentially infectious materials that results from the performance of an employee's duties. If you feel that you've been potentially exposed to a bloodborne pathogen at work, contact your supervisor so that an exposure report can be made. Once this confidential report is made, hepatitis or HIV testing will be made available. Statistics. There are 140,000 to 320,000 infections from hepatitis B each year. These infections result in 140 to 320 deaths per year from acute illness and 5 to 6,000 deaths per year from chronic liver disease, including cancer. Hepatitis C affects four times more people than HIV. It's estimated that 4 million Americans may be infected. Every 15 minutes, someone in the U.S. dies of AIDS. Review Always practice universal precautions, and that is to assume all blood or body fluid is contaminated and protect yourself. Trained personnel only will clean up and contain all biohazard materials. A carry of bloodborne pathogens will not always exhibit signs or symptoms. Not all bloodborne pathogens can be cured, and you're more likely to be exposed to hepatitis than HIV.